By the way, you, you, you can leave that as well. You know how you know you know the drill. You can leave that as well. I'm Carlos. Wait. Hey, hello everyone. I'm Carlos Azalot, and welcome to the G2 podcast. Today we have he who's known as the first blood king and recently known as the best brom and support on earth and also recently known as the untiltable this guy is mr jankos how's it going brother hello everyone um it's going good i mean not going really good because as you can <laughs> see i have the spanish jersey but we didn't really go to spain but the jersey is so cool that i like i really wanted to wear it at least once so maybe we should wear it for the gauntlet maybe yeah right. i mean that's another bad, bad idea we i actually did discuss <laughs> it and yeah maybe we should i mean it looks really good you know so so what's the worst thing that can happen the catastrophe already happened I think wearing the Spanish jersey is like only a good thing, you know, it's like, yeah, really. hey, Spanish fans, we're sorry we sucked during those two weeks. <laughs> uh, we hopefully don't suck anymore. And I, I you know, I, I got this interview from uh, Darius from uh, the shot caller, was it? Yeah, the shot caller and in Madrid. And he was like, um, yeah, he has the same question. I said, yeah, we may just play with it in, in the gauntlet, you know? And, and he was like, don't you, aren't you a bit concerned about uh you know the fact that you did this jersey for world and you weren't bad and you know a couple of examples where you do a special jersey now it's pain and it goes bad what if you wear it now and it goes bad again and it's i refuse to believe in black magic fuckery so i just refuse to believe in any of that so i will just wear it and win the gauntlet and and, and, and move on yeah i mean i think the <laughs> preparation and the screams are going way better than mm -hmm. they were when it comes to us playing well and us playing as a team compared to like what it was before the quarter yeah. so i don't believe in like black magic either so i think yeah i mean it doesn't ma i mean for us it's just about being comfortable on stage right and yeah. uh, if the jersey looks sick and we want to like show it off why wouldn't we exactly that's a fantastic answer let's start off from the very beginning because the, the new people in league of legends or the new fans that don't quite know you they may they may think you just came from heavens as the first blood king but you had a um, uh, interesting uh, you know experience and background with other teams so why don't you talk a little bit even before you got into that point about what got you into league of legends or what got you into gaming in general mm. so basically i think since i was very young uh, my father was playing games and that made me spend Which games did you play? Oh, I actually don't remember. I remember Dungeon, Dungeon Keeper 2. Oh I remember my God. this game. Jeez. I remember like um, Lomax or something like that. I'm not sure if the name is familiar with everyone. And uh, he played Warcraft 1 and 2, but I was <laughs> too young to remember, that's for sure. And I remember him getting me into like Warcraft 3 and then the expansion as well. Um, and then he played some MMORPG games like Moo Online and Lineage and Oh my god, that he played the good stuff. stuff. Yeah, yeah, he did play a lot of good games because I picked it up from him and I was playing a lot of games like he did. And then, you know, as I kind of grew up and new games came out, I was playing a lot of Dota on the Warcraft 3 oh god. Uh, game modes like on Battle.net. And uh, when League of Legends came out, I saw it on like a Polish gaming channel. I saw it like in beta test, basically. So when the game came out, I really wanted to play it. But back then there was no European server and you could only play on NA. So I started playing on NA. And then after like one or two seasons, I moved to the European one because all my friends moved. So I didn't have anyone to play with, but I was always grinding the ladder and I was always like really high. Back then, as you can remember, there was like the points, the ELO, mm -hmm. and not like the... I, I like the, the ELO points. so much better, yeah. Like the points were like so cool, no? Yeah. Like if you would be Appearing like, on the top 100 or whatever, you just yeah, track yourself. Yeah, yeah. Like the points were so much cooler, I feel like. I mean, Challenger is fine as well. But anyway, um, you know, I was always very high in NA, so it was not a problem with lower pink to get like high rated. And then at some point I joined a Polish team and then my basically my career started, you know, I... Um, I actually enjoyed playing competitive and I played in a lot of like smaller tournaments like dream hacks um, and then at some point I moved on to the bigger stage and we qualified with KMT uh, back in the day and then yeah and then so yeah it was were you part of times 
do you remember when I was when I was playing? Um, so when I was a streamer and a professional player, I always had a number of Polish people that completely wrecked me in games. Like he, they would pick Shaco, gank level two, level two, level three, level oh, three, level I four, that, level I thought five. you were talking about the people that didn't like you, so they the Polish you. mafia. Do yeah, you remember yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I didn't belong to the Polish mafia because back then I actually was playing still on an A, but I've heard the stories about oh like my people God. trolling you, and I still remember <laughs> the clip where Overpo was playing Gragas. Overpo? Yeah, and then you would like stream it, right? And you would be on the camera, and he would miss every ability. And he would be like, Overpo, no, no, my eyes, my eyes. It was, <laughs> it was like, it was so funny, you know, but like, I'm pretty sure he didn't want to troll you. He just misplayed. But it was so funny. It was like the really old Gregas as well back then. Yeah. So like the E was not the stun, but it was the slow and stuff. And he, he just was actually not bad, Overpo. Yeah. Like, he played really weird champs, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he always played weird Katarina champs. Katarina you know? and stuff like that. Who, who was this big guy, this big Polish guy that everybody, I mean, he was so nice guy, but... How was he? He played support, I remember, which is funny as well. He was like gigantic. He was like the, the, for me, he was the leader of the Polish mafia. So I had to befriend him. Otherwise the guy would kick my ass. I actually don't know. Dude, you must remember, man, uh, the Joe, can you get the name? He's like, he's a guy from the, I mean, I'm pretty sure you Google Polish mafia support player, gigantic human being, and he must appear <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> he was in this, in this full Polish team. Where, where were they? I, I, it, it wasn't KMT. It was, what was it? What, what was the, what were the Polish guys playing at? Yeah. The difficult for me is that they are not, those are not my times yet, you know? So I actually don't it know. It was right the, before, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was right before me. So I don't actually remember those people, you know? Yeah. I yeah. mean, well, yeah, I, I knew only like the stories <laughs> from like the old, other Polish people. Oh my so God, man. That, the that, stories are really funny. Um, unbelievable. I, I actually had a lot of fun. It's just that some games that would just hunt me and snipe me on the stream <laughs> and it was just terrible. Um, but they were, they were, they were actually great people. I, I, I love them. When, the, when we were all in the LCS in the first season of the LCS, it was so fun. Everybody there, it was, it was actually so different than what it is today. You know, today is like very professional b beforehand. It wasn't that professional. It was like, everybody was just fucking around and <laughs> it, it was different. It was really much different. Yeah. I mean, I remember my first season in the LCS and like back then it was already trying to be like really professional. And I think my first game on LCS stage was, um, in like the old. I don't even remember the name of the team, but we qualified to play on LCS stage as non-LCS team. And we were fighting for like uh, a chance to fight LCS team to get into the LCS. And we fought against a really good team as well. I think, I don't think we were, they were the Copenhagen Wolves. Maybe it was, I, I, th I remember it was probably it alternate. Was, yeah, it was, I think, alternate. It was maybe. alternate, one of these teams. I remember that. I mean, it was exactly in the playoffs where uh, Foreign Lord did this 3K shockwave against oh, Giants. Yeah, I remember this one, yeah. It yeah. was probably the games before that, before that. I think it could be this one or it could be like the next part of the season because I remember um, playing against this team in LCS Lille. Yep. And it was where... I think uh, Yamato after. Cannon maybe joined Dragonborns. <laughs> it was like the times of <laughs> Dragonborns. Dragonborns were like losing every game, and like MIM, <laughs> I think was MIM was out or they were losing every game because after they qualified for the LCS, I think they were winning every game because of Charu. He would always play like teleport Charu. Ari, and he would just like teleport. He was insane yeah, with he, that. He was, he was really good. Charu. And then at some point, they just start sucking, and they just couldn't like get better it's a very I, I emotional know. team yeah, yeah. actually we, we will speak a little bit more about that but it's so so many examples of teams that had this catastrophic moment or week like we actually just did have and then and then the team completely implodes just implodes there's so many there's that team there's dragonborns which which also actually did very well before the week the split before or at their beginning of the season there was origin of course there's like so many different teams that just imploded and couldn't get it back yeah i mean i think i agree with you but i think uh, like from my perspective as a pro player also i think i mean you were a pro player too so <laughs> it's same but anyway the point is that i feel like <laughs> it's, it's a teams, nice low-key burn right there yeah i mean <laughs> i mean it, the, the point is that it was um and right now it's still the same because every team has issues and every team at some point will like explode or maybe not explode, but at least um, try to like fix 
uh, something or maybe there will be like quiet days or maybe there will be days that the scrims are not going too well but i just think that some teams they have a higher selling than the other teams so for example when teams like mym or dragon balls were not you know top of the ladder um i i don't know if it was you know because of screams because those were like different times as well so maybe they couldn't play because of i know they didn't have pcs and they didn't have internet you know because back then we heard like so many stories of yeah, we heard stories. the good teams not being able to practice because yeah. of weird reasons so maybe those were like the reasons but i actually don't think so i think the issue was that some of the teams when maybe they felt fulfilled with the, what they achieved they just... and they didn't have strong enough motivation to actually become better you know and for us for example like the two weeks ago when we lost in quarter quarters the, that was like the most depressing feeling we probably ever experienced i mean i've been to a lot of semi-finals that i lost or like i lost in quarters as well last uh, last year with h2k once so it's always it always feels really bad but you always have this hope that like you can still do something you know but those two weeks were so like insanely like bad but right now we are back on track so i'm really happy with that because it feels like i mean i'm not saying we will be like the best team overnight or the best team over like one week but for sure we have like the chance now you know because we are actually playing well and we are playing as a team and everything is back to what it used to be and not like they really bad like terrible like i'm not sure if i can say this word but it was really bad yeah it was it was it was, <laughs> it was terrible it was terrible um and and i feel i feel like like i don't want to get ahead of like into that topic yet but um i feel like part of it was just burnout because i remember reading every report and i remember watching also a few games it was just like i couldn't i mean i don't know league of legends enough to make a technical kind of assessment of what was wrong right a tactical assessment of what was wrong but i could see that there was so many things wrong that you couldn't point at one or two, which is typically what you can do, right? Like these guys are underperforming or the team is playing too X, Y, Z, or too aggressive or, you know, or too defensive, do nothing, whatever. It was like so many things at the same time. And for me, that is probably a byproduct of lack of creativity, lack of, I don't know, loving the game maybe. Like maybe there was a, a factor of burnout. And, I, I mean, and, I think it was burnout for sure, but it's also that I feel like a lot of the issues that we had were also the issues that we experienced before, especially in Spring Split. I think a couple of those issues were visible in our games against Fnatic already, like mm -hmm. uh, last split. And since the meta is very similar, or was at least when, at the beginning of playoffs, um, we fa faced similar issues. And since they, rema they did remain unsolved back then, we lost trust in each other and th that would cost us to play really bad in game and instead of playing as five as one unit we would play as five good players instead of playing like as a team so i think that was for sure one of the issues as well i mean it does include the burn up part though so yeah it was i don't know man it was so fucking I, bad I know. <laughs> you know I've, I've never we have 11 teams in g2 right and we've historically had on average like 10 11 as well so we've always gotten this many teams and in three years and a half now right three years and a half of actual life of the company i have never ever seen a team tilt so hard in screams like the win ratio of that there was humble i've never seen that never ever ever and in a way i mean it's terrible but in a way it's reconforting because you don't become bad players from one day to another that's literally impossible it's it's mental it literally is only mental may that be that you guys stop trusting each other as much may that be burnout may that be a combination of both or even other factors we can't we can't even comprehend today uh, but what i see is that you, you then took one week off you returned and everything just changed which means that i know you're <laughs> you're engaging more yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean it has to i mean be. it has it yeah for sure it is you know i mean i think the, the the break probably helped us because everyone came back with like fresh minds to the game and everyone more started creative. trying yeah and also this is the, like the last chance we have right 
So we everyone wants to make it towards, you know, like mm -hmm. we didn't lose on purpose. We didn't we weren't like, hey, let's fuck Carlos, you know, like, <laughs> hey, let's lose so he gets mad, you know. It wasn't like that, or it wasn't like, hey, let's like uh, let's lose so our all of our fans will lose hope or something. It was basically we were trying, but it just didn't work, you know. Yeah. But after the the week off and like us refreshing our minds, it just feels so much better. And also, like I said before, it's the last chance of us making it worlds. So we need to make it count and we just want to be there. So we just you know, we go on stage, we play our hearts out, and we'll see what happens. Let's 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 go a, a step back. Uh, Rocket, when you were in Rocket, that was a middle of back team, uh, but essentially your first more professional place in which you you, you played at, right? Um, how was that? I mean, it was for sure not as professional as it is, as it it is now, because also since we qualified with a new organization, I mean, we didn't have organization. We were just called KMT, and we wanted to look for one when we got the slot to sell them the slot and to mm -hmm. basically get like a good org in LCS. So it's exactly what we did, and um, we didn't really have the house ready for the start of the split. So we were boot camping in I think uh, ESC Gaming House. I think there's like tournaments that like th there is like this boot camp that we had mm -hmm. in a place where like a tournament is um, taking place. But I don't actually remember the name of the tournament, but it's basically like uh, a small city in Germany next to Col Cologne. And uh, oh, yeah, I, I remember where that, where that was. Um, no, it's, it's not Dusseldorf. It's no. I can't remember, but it, yeah, but a few teams played there. Yeah, and we would we would like Rocket would book us like a hotel or no hotel, I don't remember whatever. But like we would basically spend like our first month there, and we would uh, practice. So we would walk to the office and we would practice there, and then we would walk back. And that was I think the first month, and then we would move to another book boot camp. I think um, for like another two months, and then I think after I am. Um, Katowice in 2014. That's the best tournament ever, especially for a Polish person. That's yeah, the yeah, but best. we didn't play. You know, we we only watched. It was did you like ever we, play in Katowice? I did play, but I played in 2016. So I did play. No, 17 actually. I did play last and how year. How was it? Okay. That's oh, insane. It was so good. I love Polish crowd, man. It's incredible. I, mean, I think the Spanish crowd that we experienced in Madrid in the finals. I mean, even though we were not there, it was like insane. It was you know, insane. like it was so insane. But like for me, it was exactly the same in Katowice in Spodek when like everyone's cheering my name and I was playing in uh, Man. in H2K and like everyone's but like you, you have it in your like, mind forever yeah now. like it's, it's like such a cheerful memory I can come back to and even though we didn't win and you guys actually did make the finals back then but you lost as well yeah um it, it's such a good memory you know like tournament itself was not as I mean we, we did have some issues I, I don't know why I mean it happens you know it happens to everyone um but I mean, there is, I don't remember any, like, any of the, like, I mean, I do remember the issues, but all in my memory is, like, about the good us being, yeah, the good stuff, like, of us course. playing on stage and us, like, having fun and, like, it's just so insane. And uh, it's a shame that League of Legends is not partnership with IEM anymore. Uh, like, we will not have I, I used to like, love those tournaments too, man. Yeah, like, yeah. ESL gets a lot of shit, um, rightfully so, but... Man, those tournaments like IEM, ESL One, we have ESL One New York coming in very soon, like by the end of uh, this month, and I'm going there as well. It's, I mean, like the problem is that in League of Legends there is MSI and there's Worlds, and there's pretty much like only Worlds really, like as, as the big big thing, and is is everything can go wrong. Even if you have like, an incredible team, everything can go wrong. Last year we had. In in everybody's opinion, one of the best, if not the best, Western team, and then we had in the same group the world that what ended up being the world champions and the best Korean team, right, or second best Korean team. Yeah, yeah and it was really it amazing. was really really tough, and we had supposed to be the best seeding possible, so things can actually go wrong in this one tournament. It's like the international in Dota 2, right? And if that happens, then you essentially like, you know, what do you do? Like, yeah, you won in Europe, but no one cares about that. People care about the worlds. Sure. Hey, I care about it. I want to win Europe. <laughs> you haven't won Europe yet. It's yeah, true. I, mean, I get it. I think it's, true. Um, it's kind of true. I mean, the big picture is always Worlds and people are looking at the teams who make it far in Worlds. And I think some of the issues you guys had is not, I mean, in 2016, at least we had, as H2K, we had like pretty easy group. 
Um, but you guys you have, reached semifinals, I remember. Yeah, yeah, but you guys had easy group as well. You played oh, yeah, Albus we fucked Nott up. And no, 2000, yeah, yeah, 2016. We don't speak about 2016, <laughs> yeah, okay? okay. 2016 is not, is not in my, it's not yeah. in my calendar anymore. Perk like, you see, that, 15 yeah. and then 17 automatically. <laughs> when we're 16, there's no 16. <laughs> So yeah. nothing happened in 16. Yeah, but 17, you guys had a pretty tough group, I remember Nothing that. happened in 16. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, Perks actually uh, learned so much from 16 Worlds. He learned so much. And he was a rookie back then still. He was, was a rookie. Like his first he year, played so. incredibly well, but not in Worlds. Like, yeah, during the, the season, he played insane, uh, insanely well, but then in Worlds, he completely tilted and he was overpressured. And he was a kid at the end of the day. He told me like also he was like really burned out because he was trying so so much yeah. to like play as much as possible, like didn't sleep yeah. enough and stuff. But yeah, like, I mean, and, and he screams when he were in sin actually. He was playing against all faker and yada yada yada, and he was really going amazingly well. But then on stage he would just choke. Mm. And he learned so much from this actually. So um, I have a theory that these hard moments in which I mean it's not a theory, it's literally a fact. These hard moments where you lose in quarterfinals like the, a few weeks ago against misfits like this defines kind of your future success right because you remember what the fuck went wrong there and then you try not to replicate and you try to avoid all of that right and as soon as you see signs of the same thing happening then you 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 know how to identify it and kind of turn things around before the catastrophe happens it's just how you default into 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 learning um so yeah i'm i'm, I'm very hopeful that that we we make it happen uh, in Gauntlet. So then after Rocket, you joined H2K and you had an in insane amount of first bloods. Um, is that, do you think that was or is thanks to your playstyle or it was just a bit of luck? Uh, I think it's a little bit of both. I think when I joined the CS first, people didn't look for as much aggression but Early also aggression. Yeah. i felt like i had teammates who would support me a lot i mean they wouldn't they wouldn't you like had Febby, right even no no i i think the first black king was like back in i mean it was both like kind of 2014 15 in rocket mostly because i spent two, two years in rocket two years in h2k um so it was like basically like back in the polish team uh we i would get called a lot to like try to help someone you know because my laners were like not the strongest laners mm -hmm. and i was like not the best jungler so we would also all had to work together really well to make it count and we did and uh, a lot of my first bloods were because also of my teammates were playing really well and would like play on me so that i can get get the kill but also it's because i was always focused on ganking or always focused on helping my teammates instead of focusing on myself but now after you know so many years in in league of legends i also learned that i need to farm a lot and i need to focus on like the map and even though i can get a kill maybe the kill itself is not worth it because if i get the skill there but we will lose tempo on it or if mm -hmm. we will uh, if enemy will be able to get pressure on the other side of the map that we will not be able to retake because of that kill then it's just not worth it to go for it so i think the the game is just so much different from what it was and what it is right now um but i think during the last couple of weeks in ulcs i did get a lot of kills and i i did give up some of them too but i did get a lot of like the the, the early kills so it was it was fun and then in the playoffs it just went downhill and then uh, yeah the gauntlet is left so we are playing either splice either the misfits i'm really looking forward to the rematch if we can get one so you you, you played with one of the most interesting people um in League of Legends, which is Forgiven. Oh yeah, I did. I, I I have I have to ask you, Forgiven is undeniably, or was undeniably one of the most mechanically gifted players in the game. It, like it was insane. How was playing? How was it playing with him on an emotional level, on a mindset level? Um, because and here comes my thought process after having never spent a single minute of my life in the same team as him. But in my eyes, he's a little bit misunderstood. And what is your experience with playing with Forgiven in the past? Uh, this is a topic that is difficult to discuss because I think Forgiven, like you said, is a really good player. I mean, was at least, I'm not sure because right now he's in the army, so he mm -hmm. can't really play. Um, but he for sure was or is a really great AD carry and he did show it on multiple occasions in multiple teams, even though the teams didn't really 
do well, not all of them. I mean, I would say that his biggest success is probably with us in 2016 when we, mm -hmm. uh, even though we didn't make it to the finals, we did make it to world semifinals and I think all of us played really well. And I think he was playing really well as well. Uh, and I think with Freeze, we probably would have never done it, uh, like going so far, because I think Freeze was, Freeze was, I think, way better when it comes to like handling his emotions and playing with the team. But I think Forgiven was like kind of, maybe not what we, yeah, like you can say it is what we needed because he was just playing really well. And since we didn't play as much around bot lane with Freeze, we had to play on bot lane with Forgiven because with Forgiven is that he would have the same play style and he wouldn't change it. So no matter what kind of draft you would make, you would always have to be aware that your bot lane is going to like kind of push and try to punish your opponent. So <clears throat> that made the opponent's jungler's movements obvious because he mm -hmm. had to help his bot. But I think the game after like six to let's, uh, let's say like it's the best, best case scenario for us and we played really well. But like when that six turrets f fell, like it was so clueless, you know, like the team was clueless and he was clueless what to do on the map. And it was not only because of him, but it was like so difficult for him to learn stuff because if you would point out his mistake, he would like explode a, a mm -hmm. lot and he would be really negative, like not negative because he was really passionate about the game. So that caused him this way, but it was really difficult to talk to him and I understand. we tried to do it as like players but also as like you know the coach and it was like so difficult to handle him mm -hmm. and that's why we also made the decision to try another ad carry in summer split but it just didn't work out for us because i think i mean i don't dis disrespect freeze or anything but i just don't think he was like that good and yeah. i personally like didn't mind playing with him but i mean i wanted to try him because i thought we just needed a player so we learn as a team but like he just didn't fit as well, you know, and even though we were like good on like emotional level as a team, like better than with Forgiven, we just didn't perform as well because we d couldn't count on him, you know, but when it comes to like Forgiven, we could count on him except for team fights because he would not trust anyone in the team. That's how I felt like, and I it was see. not because of the players for sure. 100% I'm certain that's just his play style. He just doesn't trust me. Uh, I mean, not me, but like everyone mm -hmm. and I remember like on multiple occasions, he wouldn't trust Vander, he wouldn't trust anyone. And I remember me chasing him when I was playing Kindred and he was playing Caitlyn or something, I remember. And I also had to chase him in a team fight so I can put my ult on him because like he was just running from me. He was running from everyone, you know, like he wouldn't let us peel for him and stuff. So I think, yeah, there's like a lot of issues we had with him, but all in all, he was a, for sure a really good player. Would I consider playing with him again? No, I wouldn't want to play with him again, personally. Um, because I think he didn't like me and I didn't like him. And also I felt like there is a lot of really good players right now in the scene that have the same mechanics and can play the same way, but also can like help the team out and can like bring more to the team itself, not only on emotional level, but also on like the game knowledge or how to play the <laughs> game level and yeah, that's basically the story. No, that's very, very good to read. Uh, so is my understanding from how League of Legends is today is that before you could get away with, like some players were just so good that you could get away with the player being maybe too individualistic because there was a big skill difference between him and maybe the second best, right? And, and there's a million examples uh, of this happening. But it seems like right now, everybody is so good and like everybody on an individual level is just so good or everybody from the top teams i actually disagree you disagree yeah you can finish your point though and okay so it. and my point is that as time goes by it is increasingly more important the team play aspect than the individual aspects which was the case before that is my point okay i agree 100 percent. i think the team aspect is what it matter uh, what matters right now i think though that we have so many like not the best like for example when you have weeks that you are like just playing worse mechanically mm -hmm. you can still win because we are a better team mm -hmm. and that's the biggest difference between asian teams and western teams i see like right now how it is is that for example in our team i cannot be like i don't need to be the best jungler what it does need to be the best support paris doesn't need to be the best mid lane you know like we have examples of like every player in our team that you know like let's say a player from other team could play better um 
but as a team, if we are like the best team, if we play well as five, if we know what to do on the map, if we know how to behave with waves, how to play on tempo in Europe, we can be the best team, no problem. Because people on, like in the in the Western world are still not playing like the best macro they could be. And uh, when you compare us to the Asian teams, that's the biggest difference is, is like actually the mechanics and people playing to their limits. Really? That's why I think China could be the best region right now, even not Korea, because I think Chinese people I mean, they tend to not do so well at World Finals, but I think RNG will like just make it again. I think they'll win. But I think that the biggest difference is that the Asian people are so gifted mechanically or they are so good that not only they play on the, on the same level when it comes to macro or even better level, but also their players are playing to their limits when it comes to champions. They will like fight 24 seven and every single one of them in every fight will play the best way they can play. And that's, why I believe that it's going to be so difficult when it comes to us beating the Asian teams because our players are just not as good as their players. And even if we get at the same macro level, like their team fighting, like it just blows my mind how good are they, you really? know? Like every single one of them plays so pitch perfect. Like what the fuck, you know? Like what the fuck? Like it's so insane. Like I remember even watching the semifinals EG against the other team and, and and like all of them were like so fucking good. Like it's unbelievable, you know? So I think that's the biggest difference basically right now between like the West and the East. So you still think that the gap is big? I mean, I think the gap is for sure closing. I mean, it's a meme right it's now, a meme, right? But It's a meme, okay. but it's, it's true, you know? Like okay. the gap is smaller and for example, I mean, maybe you don't like it, but I, I think so. So I think Fnatic is actually like a good yeah. example of like what what do we need to beat the, the Western teams? I mean, the Eastern teams, like the Asian teams. Maybe you don't like it. I think. No, uh, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like fucking Fnatic. like it. I don't like it. <laughs> no, but, but it is what it is. Yeah, They're I actually Fnatic the best team in Europe right now. For sure are the best team. And, you know, they did deserve the win. And I honestly thought that Shark is going to get demolished, but they didn't. Amazing played out of his mind. Game and one was insane. Actually. Yeah, he was like one v nine purely, you know. But I just think that when Fnatic plays against the best bot lanes, like even Reckless will struggle, and we saw that MSI already. I think like probably the best AD carry in Europe right now, Reckless, and always a star of his team and always a face of his team. I think Caps, for example, will, Caps will, is insane. Yeah, Caps will not have issues probably, but like even him, sometimes losing lane to nukedag didn't yeah. actually make the game lost yeah, for but also nukedag is insane in lane yeah like i mean i think New Dag Dag is, is very good ridiculous in lane. but as you can see like fanatic not like them not winning lanes or like them even losing early games didn't like it, it's the same as springs with finals against us they could be a little bit behind they could get gang they could get like they could get killed but like in the big picture they are like so much better as a team right now than any other European team that they just won, you know? And it same happened against um, Splice, no, sorry, against Schalke. Mm -hmm. They just kind of won. Like you didn't you didn't see a point where like they would like make the huge play or something. They just played so well on Vision and their top laners always knew, their top laners saw us. I mean, Bipo, I think not so much, but saw us always knew what when to move, how to play the game. He would play tanks. He wouldn't win lane, but he would just be so good on the map. And same goes for Reckless. Insane team fighting, no mistakes whatsoever. Caps, even though he can go 0-3, you can always count on him to do something. Procs are always consistent, always really fucking good. And then we have uh, Hilisank, who is the playmaker kind of on the support. So I just think, yeah, I mean, this team fits, but I just don't see them winning to the best Asian teams. I just don't think so. I think their players are just not good enough. Even though they are the, they, you could argue all of them are the best in Europe, they're just not the best in the world, you know? And mm -hmm. even though they, their macro is like really good, they know how to play on a vision. I just don't see them winning like team fights or I don't see them like winning lanes, lanes against like the best teams. Hey, it, it reminds me a little bit in, I remember when we, play, we were playing finals, the four finals we played in ULCS for those two years, it felt like in all of in all those finals felt like we could just not lose. And yeah, yeah, exactly. G2 was the same for two years. You yeah. guys just couldn't lose. No it, way. It, and it was I was going to the finals and even though there were like some team fights or whatever, like it didn't matter. Like at the end of the day, it was just I, I knew that it was just fine. There was at some point Sven was gonna get three items and uh, at some point Perks was gonna I don't know, it's just you just knew it was gonna work, yeah. you know? And I think that Mitty plays a big role in that, by the way. I think Mitty is uh, is actually insane. Yeah, I, I think so too. And uh, I knew Mithy. I mean, I had opportunity to play with him on All Star 2016. Oh, All Star, okay. And uh, he was there <laughs> and I actually enjoyed how he fought in game and how he wanted to play the game. And I think him 
like getting a lot of backlash in TSM <laughs> for like his performances. I think that's bullshit. I think he's actually like I the one that is actually making the team better. And without I him, with I think the team would like collapse 100%. I agree and, with you. Uh, I think, yeah, he's for sure a great player. Um, maybe like he's not as like insane mechanic. He was never but insane mechanic. He, yeah, yeah, exactly. But his brain is like so smart. And from what I've heard from Perks, this is, I cannot say it like on my, in my opinion, because I don't have my opinion because I didn't play with him long enough. But when, well, from what I heard from Perks is that he would never like give it to emotions, you know? He would always like be so good as like a leader kind of yep. and he would always try to improve the team and he was always, always look for the positive aspects and he would always have idea how to play so it sounds like a great player to me yeah so. Let, let's imagine a Mitty and you're Jankos and you fuck up in a scrim okay and he will say and, and you maybe disagree okay but he will say hey you fucked up here you shouldn't have dived like this or you took one tower shot too much you fucked up and then the first times when you're starting to work with Mitty, you'll be like, what the fuck? Like, this guy is just too direct. I don't like it, you know? Um, and, and you may take it slightly bad, you know? But then you will realize that in the next stream, he will be like, I, fu I fucked up. I took one tower shot too much, you know? And you, he will say it with the exact same tone and the exact same emotion or energy that he did to you. So you will realize that he, the only thing he wants is to improve. He doesn't care whether he's telling it to you or to himself or to the coach or to anybody. He will just tell you the things as they are in his mind. He could be wrong. Typically he's not, but he could be wrong. And, and, and that's okay. You know, and he says, I could be wrong. You know, like, that kind of mindset is the best mindset you can have. And Luca learned a lot from him because Luca was much more emotional before than he is right now. He's still emotional, but he was much more emotional before. And, and he, we all learn, even myself, even I learned from Mitty. It's, it's, the guy is not like the captain, like you don't put Mitty as the captain, but he becomes the captain for the team. Um, so I, I, I always hold or held Mitty in very high esteem. And it's a shame what's happening in TSM, to be honest, because I mean, I don't know the internal aspects of it, because maybe knowing too much would be considered poaching. But <laughs> but um, I do speak with Mitty every now and then, and and you know, it's just it's just odd to be honest. It's just odd that somebody like him is not wrecking North America. He should be wrecking North America. And then Sven is insane. Like, yeah, Sven is for sure. Really Sven is. I mean, he, he even right now that things are not going well for them. Sven is just playing perfect. Yeah, <laughs> you know? but but that's the thing. Like ETSM has same like you know Bjergsen always good. You know Hanser pretty much always good. Maybe like not the best top laner, but like he's decent. Hanser is okay. And oh, and then Greek, right? I think he's playing like well. He yeah, but I don't know, man. Like, they had... The team is just like not working, you know? I don't know, so... man. But then they, they don't have Svenskar anymore and then he's playing well and then, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like it's, it has to be the culture of the organization. It has to be the culture of the organization. It can't be that you have those three players. Like the, with those three players, you can add monkey number one top lane, monkey number two jungle, and it won't matter. Because with this core, of yours and Sven and Mitty, that core should be enough to get you to finals in North America. Maybe, maybe semi-final, maybe to get to Worlds. Like, it should the be least, enough. Yeah. Okay, at least. Like, it should be enough. That core it should be enough. But it's not the case. And also the top lane, I, I don't know, man. It's just, it has to be the culture. The, I've, I've never played there, but it has to be the culture. Um, but anyway, the gauntlet run. The gauntlet run. That's where it gets... <laughs> To that point um you said of course things didn't go well before now you're hopeful because things are looking slightly better or better right um not talking about scream results or anything but about what you get out of the screams right yeah basically that yeah. right i mean scream results never matter it's not never, about win or lose matters, it's always right? about like what can we actually learn you know yep. and during those two weeks we didn't learn anything because we couldn't because we would do mistakes like we would basically die on lanes die in the jungle get caught, like do stupid shit, you know? It's yeah. not about like us not knowing what to do. It was us making a mistake before we could do anything. Yeah. <laughs> so it was pretty And extreme. very often you have this uh, shitty scream results during the week and then you would just play perfect during the official game. Yeah, exactly. So because just... you would learn from the mistakes. You would lose every exactly. game, but every game you would see, okay, hey guys, we like started Nash here, but we shouldn't start Nash. We should do this, this and this. Or, hey guys, we pushed this um, minion wave too far, but we should have base and we were low and they went Nash. And like, you would actually learn from the screams. 
every mistake one by one you would pick it up and on stage you would not make those mistakes mm-hmm. but those scrims were not like we could pick up mistakes because they would be like hey you shouldn't lose lane hey you shouldn't die here hey you cannot go in the river when they have pressure because of that like you did like everyone was just doing like mistakes you know and no one is excluded from that i think everyone's just playing bad i mean i like to think that very uh, yep. always like when my teams are not doing well i don't like to point out single person i just yeah. like to believe that we just play bad as a yeah. team and it's, i mean it's a very good point and if somebody plays so incredibly bad that he he's just you know in team yeah yeah like you then, can always yeah. carry someone you know yeah. if you are a good team you yeah. can always like you you don't need five of the best players to be like the best team yep agreed um so how, how what's the feeling in the team right now i mean if i'm a fan that's the first thing i want to know like how does the team feel as a whole what is the energy um and um what is the yeah what is the overall feeling coming into gauntlet i think that we feel good you know i think the first day we when we came back was tough because we screamed and we lost every game again almost we actually won one but that was the first day and we were a bit rusty because we didn't play with other i remember, one week, I remember reading wait i remember reading the report no, actually i was speaking with with the, the coaching team and i remember that it was two zero three right and then uh one of you i think it was perks said oh i'm feeling the victory now and then you won it was it was that first day right it was like one three or something like that yeah but we always say that though we always say like hey i'm feeling the win yeah, now. yeah i'm feeling the- <laughs> and then and then we played against i think vitality the next day and then they were like just so bad but apparently i mean kiki's i think in interview said on stage that they i oh, know jizuke said i don't remember anyway they said that they are like the worst two weeks of screams ever mm-hmm. so maybe it's same similar thing happened to but them but they, somehow they, they quite, did, yeah they played quite well yeah they, they did win against misfits and play well so but anyway like we played against vitality and like the hope kind of got back to us as well because we would like win so many more games than mm-hmm. we did ever before and then since then we are actually winning like we don't go um even in screen blocks we always win more games than we lose so it's going pretty well and not even that like we just play better as a team and i think yesterday was like a more difficult day and we actually made a lot you of test more some stuff as well yeah we did test some stuff and we did made more individual mistakes than right. we did before because of testing some things as right. well and uh it didn't feel too bad because you know one like it always happens mm-hmm. but like in the big picture in the in the past one and a half week we have been playing well and we when we lose games we lose because we made a mistake as a team mm-hmm. and not because of individual mistakes so i think the mood is really good as well but i think the mood is always decent like even when we are losing a lot we always try to keep the mood positive mm-hmm. and that's because perks is always trying to like be really really positive even though when things are not going well and no one of our like no player in our team is a tilter you know no no one like is bringing the mood down everyone's like joking and everyone's trying to like be cheerful to each other mm-hmm. so i think the mood is always decent I think right now, yeah, I mean, it's going well, you know, it's going well. Like, I don't see a reason why would we get fucked again, but yeah. it, it, so we what, could what, just be not good enough, you know, yeah. but I, I, I am really hopeful. To so what you can result. say is that it won't be a catastrophe, there will be a fight, and you hope that we end up on top. That's yeah, it. exactly. That's perfect, okay. <laughs> it's, it's a very polite sentence, you can't go wrong with that. Yeah, you, I mean, we, I'm not saying best. we will win, you know, because I don't know that. Like, of I, like the, the other teams, they went on stage, they played well, you know, even yep. Schalke. Yep. They they did win one games against Fnatic. I mean, maybe it was because Amazing just like put his, mm-hmm. and he was so good, but maybe it was because they are a good team too, you know. Last time we faced them, we lost. Last time we faced Mysteries, they got 3 Uh But I think we for sure are way, way, way more prepared, and mm-hmm. I'm really confident going against those teams as well. I mean, it's it, not like... It would, be, it would yeah. be a huge statement if you all of a sudden win the gauntlet, it would be a huge statement and especially because we would have to beat Schalke for that and Schalke played really well in the finals and in playoffs in general so it would be a good statement that's undeniable so um, I'm pretty sure everybody's I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's gonna have very good viewership actually everybody's gonna be watching some yeah, of them I mean, hoping that we lose know, some of them hoping like, that we it's, win. It's, like for the fans it's like which team will represent them as the third team this, at this World, is, this is an insane gauntlet actually like is I think it's the toughest gauntlet to date yeah it's, it's for sure like we have like I mean, even Splice, they did almost win against Schalke. Splice was playing very well. Yeah, like Splice, they went down 2-3. So one game off of being actually, maybe they would be in the in the finals, you know, maybe they're like good enough. So I think it's pretty exciting. We have so many good teams, you know. So, so Schalke has the, like the best plays because they are like the, in the finals, you know. Yeah, they are waiting the final for like boss. the last team, yeah. 
But I think it could be good uh, to be where we are at the moment because we get to play more, I guess. And yeah, coming I, into I, finals, I agree with that. It can be a good thing. You know, Let's last see. year I was in the gauntlet as well, but I started at the third position. So I had to play three BO5s and we won the first one, the second one, and then we lost Fnatic, you know. Oh. But it was like... Oh, true, Fnatic. Oh, it's true. Fnatic had to qualify through the gauntlet. Yeah, last year they had to. Yeah. Oh my God, that's tough. Um, okay, so would you be apt to do some sort of um, small bet, as in, you know, if you win the gauntlet, you get something? Or you do something or something happens. Yeah, sure. But like, what's the, do you have idea or is it just... I'm just opening up the, the box right okay. now, the conversation. I mean, what, yeah. What, 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 what do you like? What do you like? What, what, what are the things you like? Playing League of Legends. I hear <laughs> <laughs> You literally have all champion. I mean, all skins and all that because your account is unlocked. So that's a no-go. Um, um what, do you like I anything? do like playing World of Warcraft, but I don't have time for that right now. Okay. But I will not like for sure I will not have time when I because yeah, we, sure. if I go Korea, it's like so much more fun to play as well because of the Korean soccer and stuff. Um so, I like food. I really like, like food. food. Okay. Yeah. You I don't like, like seafood and I don't like fish too much, okay. but I do like food a lot. Yeah, like meat mainly. Like yeah. I guess I like American food because I like fat food. <laughs> like, I me too yeah. actually. I, I I'm guilty of that too. Yeah. You know, every time I go to the U.S., first thing I, I do is either in and out Shake Shack, or uh, Five Guys. Same. Every... Same. Really? Yeah, exactly. Same. Like, We're the I same mean, right there. Probably was my coach, and he was American, and he was always telling me all those stories about American fast food. So the first thing I did when I went to uh, San Francisco in, in, in World Finals, I would just go Insta fast food, you know? And same thing I did when I went to All Star, and same thing I did when I went to um the rivals this year like you, just, you just, just insta gotta go, you know? become american for the yeah, first few like hours you just go, it is what it is. Oh, so get like out of your mind just eating your double cheeseburger okay oh, this is actually it's, it's impressive actually it's so it's incredible it's so fatty this just melts in your mouth yeah it's so fat and it's like so guilty you feel guilty but it feels so good yes yeah, like, yeah exactly and then you finish it and you're like i feel bad but but not really. That was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you kind of feel bad, but you smile, you know? Yeah, exactly. You're smiling like an idiot. All right. So, um, so it can't be League of Legends related. It can be World of Warcraft related. That would be stupid. Like shooting yourself in the food. Um, you like food. So we... Okay. I was thinking about one thing. Okay. One okay. thing. I wanted to do it. And I think Luca wants to do it too. What is it? We want to sky, try to skydiving. Skydiving? Yeah. Okay. So if we win... All right, we go all three to skydive. Sure. You want to do that? Yeah. I mean, Luca is not here, but I'm, 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 I'm assuming... I'm pretty sure he will go, yeah. I'm assuming he'd go. That's uh, do, kind do, of scary, do, though. Do, do you think... Do you think... Yeah, imagine... She's, imagine the, the parachute doesn't open for some of us. Just You just fucking splash yourself in the ground. Yeah, you do. There's I no think more G2. There's no more worlds. Yeah. How would Riot... Is there anything in the contract against that with Riot? Do we know anything of that? And I know if you're, if you're a football player... Like you you have a contract with your team and you can't do shit like that. Yeah, so, I've heard about it. So I think I had a similar point in H2K contract where I couldn't do extreme sports because of what, what it happens if I break my hand, you know? So but I think if you if we do that with you, Carlos, it's fine. So if you yeah, I mean, it's like, I mean, it's like if I, you know, it's like if I create an addendum, it's fine for this one day. Oh, interesting. So uh, skydiving, I always wanted to do it as well. I've never done it. We, we can do like, if it's not skydiving, we can do something really difficult like when it comes to sports you're cheating I mean, yourself I it's unbelievable you're right now cheating yourself yeah i'm yeah, like yeah. oh holy <laughs> shit right, i'm like holy shit it becomes real now i don't want to do it it becomes real <laughs> i was always talking about it but i really don't want to do it no i wanted to try it because i also also have um the i'm scared of heights so trying skydiving would be really good and i also went to warsaw once and i flew like a sport plane mm, and it was pretty extreme as well so now the next step is jumping off the plane. Okay, so that could be one thing. Um, although I can I can see why you would maybe not want to win. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it's fine, you know. Like, what's the chance? Like, what's the chance of something go going wrong? Like, it's fine. Skydiving is fun. I mean, I yeah, mean, I, I people people fun. do people die. Do, yeah, I know. I know. Like, I mean, or, or they get paralyzed. Yeah, it happens. It it, it does there's a chance. It's small there's chance, but I mean, if it's if it's in the legs, you can still get away with playing some league. Yeah, but it was suck. <laughs> it was 
suck. <laughs> it would still suck. It would definitely still suck. Yeah. Okay, let's find something else because I feel like our legal team will be uh, and Riot will potentially be worried about about this. Maybe. Um, so what else do you like? You like you like so with food. I have a few, a few ideas, but what else do you like? Anything clothing? Like you you're not. Uh, I don't think you you love. You're like me. You're like whatever. I just don't care. Yeah. Just whatever. I, just um, I do like the amusement parks, for example. Amusement parks. Okay. Like I went to LA to Disneyland and it was amazing. Yeah, and no, nobody uh, dies there. That should be fine. Yeah. So maybe we could go to some kind of amusement park. Even Korea, is there any amusement park in Berlin? In Berlin, I don't think so. I think that like the closest one in Berlin, in Germany is like six hours away or something. So it's pretty far. But I think in Korea, there is one and uh yeah amusement park and like the i don't know the name but a rope park where you have to climb the trees and oh that's actually amazing that has to be something in berlin because there's a lot yeah, of forest there, there, yeah we there went has actually, to be something we went actually to one but it was so crowded that we left <laughs> like we so went, you went and you left <laughs> yeah we went there and we looked at all the children because it was sunday it was actually like three days ago right it was sunday and we went there we really wanted to try it because i i it would be my second time and it would be second time for wadin and hialman it was first time for pegs we went there but it's like so many children and um when it comes to the rope parks you cannot just skip the queue because if someone is trying to um to make it like through, through the hard thing like on the trees you cannot just like skip like you cannot just pass him you have to wait until he finishes and mm. then you can like try yourself so we just realized that we have to wait so much time all right it was so it's not worth it so something simpler you like food you don't like fish so <laughs> What we can do is we can go to one of these two Michelin star restaurants. There's a few here. In, I mean, a few. There's like three maybe in Berlin. Uh, like two Michelin rest, two Michelin stars. Uh, like it's really high profile cuisine, some fusion crap with things that explode in front of you and things like that with multiple. Sounds colors. really good, yeah. And and Sounds we really and we bring the team there. What about that? Yeah, I'm I'm up for that. I, I was in one of those man. I remember I ate like a bowl. Like it was like a spoon. It was like a ball inside, and it was um, a Spanish Spanish tortilla, Spanish omelet, but it was a ball, right? And then you ate it, and it was literally Spanish omelet, but it was a ball with like liquid inside. And then it 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 it, it was it was pretty odd. It's some chemical shit, but it's pretty cool. The, I mean, the, it's 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 healthy. So the it's, taste was fine, but. Taste was it insane. just looked really oh taste, it taste insane. yeah it was, taste was insane but it's the texture you know the texture mm. was like eating like this bubble tea a, a bit but better like it was, it was actually I want to go now actually yeah, yeah it's, it's you pretty convinced good. me like we are going I it's agree. pretty good it's pretty good I don't know if there's any in Berlin but I'm pretty sure we'll, we'll find something okay so we have that I mean there should be okay if there not be. in Berlin where in Germany you know like there should there, be there, there has to be this. actually Berlin you know Berlin is uh, one of the places in Europe with the most amount of Michelin stars. Would you you never expect that he has more than uh, Paris? Which oh, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, I I also like food. If it wasn't clear, <laughs> <laughs> um, do you do you still feel like you are top two jungler in Europe at the very moment? At this very moment, I think I feel this way, but it's difficult to feel this way when you cannot back it up. Right. So for me, I can answer. think that I'm playing well and I can play really well, but my issues are also like the team issues, but also the same feeling could have any other player in our team, you know? Yep. So it's very difficult for me to say, hey, I'm the best jungler, hey, I'm at least top two jungler, you yep. know, when we lose in quarters. Yep. How, how do I prove it? That's, that's, I mean, that's a very good answer, actually. It's a pretty also respectful because... Yeah, it makes total sense. I mean, yeah, it's true. So, and okay, now about confidence. How do you feel in terms of your own play, in terms of confidence? Uh, how do you feel you'll come into your next game? When do West Place and, and Misfits play, by the way? Friday. Friday. Um, so that'll be tomorrow, right? No. Yeah. It's tomorrow, right? Yeah. Yes. They play tomorrow. Tomorrow, Friday. <laughs> <laughs> People, we are recording this. But we are tricking you, right? Because we are saying this happens tomorrow, as if it, as if today was Thursday. I just broke, I just broke production's brain right there. <laughs> this is this is what we do, you know. Take the shit seriously. Gotta tell the people the truth, you know. Scripted, 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 scripted content. Um, so tomorrow they play, 
Um, how confident do you feel playing against Splice or Misfits, whoever it is, uh, in terms of personal or individual gameplay? I feel good. I feel like we can win, but I also feel like I can basically just win the game on my own, you know? I feel like my play is... I mean, I think I've been playing... I had some really bad games um, when it comes to decision-making that mm -hmm. could cost us the early games, but I also had good games where I would win as the early games, so you could, call, you could call me inconsistent because I would play bad or good. But I think right now I'm really like confident in my play. I know that I know what to do basically. Like when I, when I load into the game, I just know what to do to win. And that's, I think, the most important thing. That feeling is the best feeling ever. Like, you know, whatever happens, you just yeah, know how to maneuver. Like no, no matter what happens in game, you always find a way to win the game. Yep. And if you are clueless on how to win the game, like we were against Misfit in quarters, like we, like, I mean, even when we got lead in second game, we were like, so what do we do now, <laughs> you know? And then we just ran it down. It would be pretty cool to play against Misfits. Uh, again, yeah, for again. sure. It would, it would be, be really cool. I, I really want to play against Misfits. Just to show the world, listen, that it's like 2016 for us in the world. It's like, that did not count. That's not in our... It's yeah, not, yeah, it's not there. It's not. It's not how we are. You know, it's not <laughs> us. It wasn't us. Yeah, exactly. All right, fair enough. So, I always like to ask questions about um, entertainment because this is selfish. You know, because I want to learn what people I'm speaking with watch or play. Or I mean, I know you only play League, but uh, I mean, you also play World of Warcraft, but. Um, watch in general or listen to so that i can get some ideas for myself and i already got so many books so many movies and shows and stuff to entertain myself with from people that told me their favorite in each area so i'm gonna ask you the same question what's your favorite books if you've ever read any that you enjoyed i don't think i have a favorite book and i'm really bad with names by the way so i could have read something and I know what is it about, but I don't remember the name. And what is the, what is the and one you remember? The same goes for like shows, <laughs> and, you know, like people, like everything. I'm so bad with names. It's That's insane. Okay. But yeah, I mean, I don't think I have like a favorite book. Like I usually read for amusement and not mm -hmm. to learn. Right. Um, so I think the book that I read, I mean, I, I read like almost every World of Warcraft book. <laughs> Man, that's amazing. Honestly, the, there's no better, there's no better lore in yeah, the whole I mean, world. Wow Lord is so insane. It's I could, insane. I, I could talk about Wow Lord like for days and nights. Yeah, it's, it's pretty insane. It's pretty insane. I also bought the, actually like, uh, because I got an apartment in Poland. So I bought like for myself, like the Illidan statue. I'm not sure if you are familiar with that one. It's like, it looks pretty cool, yeah. But anyway, except for the World of Warcraft books, um, I didn't read anything that... I've never read them, actually. Is it good? Like, should I read them? read them? I mean, I think some of them tell the story of what already happened, so you could know the story, uh, but in details, as the book usually do. Yeah. Um, but I think they're good, yeah. Oh, I, I, I enjoy them. I mean, I just enjoy reading them because there's, like, characters that I'm familiar with, and I just know, like, the story from, like, kind of their perspective, so I do enjoy reading a lot, yeah. It's unbelievable, it to those books. Uh, the stories. I, honestly, it's just, I just have goosebumps from just thinking about it. The, the movie Warcraft, even though it wasn't, like, perfect, I loved it, man. It was, like, you watched it, right, of course. I, I was, like, all the time doing, like, whoa, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> I was, and then Ragnar is insane. It was Ragnar, right, the, the, the main character? Mm -hmm. Fucking incredible. I mean, I think they could have done a better job if they would actually do the Warcraft 3 Arta story. Because mm -hmm. I think with that, they could go back or they could go forth like sequel or prequel kind of to that story. And I think that story would like, people would actually like fell in love with it more. And the, maybe there would be like a little bit less CGI involved. Yeah, it's, it's, it's and, weird uh, that they picked up the story of, of uh, Gulman, was it? Was it? I mean, it was like the story of the first invasion. Yes. Uh, so it was the story of. How like, was this warlock called? It's Gul'dan. Yeah. Gul'dan, yeah, Gul'dan. Uh, it's odd that they picked up that story. Actually, it's I, I think so too. I mean, I think maybe they thought that they would get people would like it more, so that they could actually like go and create maybe like a trilogy of like basically all the wars and like how this would happen. But I think they should have just started with like the story that people just love and. I mean, most of the people that I know, actually, like when they played the campaign and they got the Arta story, 
I mean, that's how they fell in love with the game, you know. That that's why they yeah, but enjoyed the first it and stuff. Story so story was actually that one, right? Was the one that they in the in the movie, right? The first story from the game from the actual game, World of Warcraft. Yeah, it was that, that one. That with... was that story. Yeah, I right. mean, that so was maybe they want to just do it one. the same way, like the same, you know? Yeah, just just kind of like start there and just... start there and then go into and then the next one will be Arthas, right? No, the next one will be like the second one, oh, bur- I think, and it would be a oh, Burning Crusade, right? No, 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 no that no, is Burning. The... What would be the next one? Yeah, it would be Arthas. Yeah. Right? I mean, not, no. I mean, it was, okay, so because the story finished when, I mean, I get, okay, so the movie itself was not really, it was, okay, they would add some stuff for people to enjoy the movie, like some romantic scenes and stuff, yes, which were actually not in the books or right. like we're not in the story like they oh, just added it as like a film movie movies so i think the next story could be the arta story from like the important stuff <laughs> um but they also like yeah i mean they, they skipped some stuff and they like added some i know why like garona like yeah. the orc that yeah. like killed the king like she just kind of she got mind control from what i remember and she just betrayed him and it's not like he told her to kill him mm-hmm. no so it was it was weird. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, I mean, the, the movie was enjoyable. You, you gotta live and with that. Do you yeah. remember like the the scene where like they would ride through, um, I think, uh, Goldshire or, uh, somewhere, and the, the, you could hear Murlocs? Like the. I can't remember. No, that. That's like the most like iconic, I think, name uh, like voice. But yeah, anyway, uh, so I do enjoy that, and I do watch a lot of anime, so you could say I'm a weeb. And, uh, <laughs> no, are you a weeb or a, what's the other word? Otaku. So otaku, otaku is like half, maybe, yeah. halfway through, halfway there, right? So I don't like I do, okay. So when it comes to watching anime, I do watch them and I do enjoy them, but I don't talk about them much and I don't like show it. You right, know, so I, you I don't be... like I don't I don't have blue hair. I don't like go around, <laughs> like, <laughs> like you know what I mean, right? Like I just don't like run around and like show off that I'm watch anime and yeah. I love them and stuff. So it's and I don't like speak Japanese and I don't like do yeah. all those impressions and I don't say, like o- a lot like I know sensei whatever like I don't do that stuff, you know. <laughs> So, but I do like to watch some anime for like the story or like... I, I'd the call stuff. that, that's like otaku, right? That would be cool. The Joe, what do you think? Is that otaku? Yes, no? The, no, it's not otaku. It's not. So he's like not even there. Not yeah, even, yeah they, they should create another layer like between otaku and... Um, I was about to say normal person. That would be pretty bad. Otaku and... <laughs> yeah, I don't think you should say a that. Non, a non-anime person at all. Like you, you, you gotta make up a word for that. I mean, I just like the animation. I, I like animation, and I think some of the stories are good. And I mean, in our team, only me and Wadid watches anime, and we don't really watch anime together. But I think in Misfits, I think everyone is like a whip kind of, so everyone is watching <laughs> together, you know. So it actually brings the team closer. For us, we watch movies together, you know. So okay, it's good. So I, I, I just finished for the second time. Uh, well, not really. It's my, my uh, Rose, my, my lady watching uh, Death Note, which I never thought I'd have her watch uh, an anime before, but she loved it. So mm. now she wants to try Full Metal Alchemist. So she yeah. wants to try it, which I watched a long time ago. I didn't finish it, but I loved it as well. So uh, maybe we slowly get into that. I don't know. I don't know. But it's, it's, some of them are pretty cool, actually. Yeah, some of them. I mean, some some of them are really bad and i wouldn't watch them because they don't tell a story they just are there to like watch them and enjoy them but some of them are like have a good story and uh, and it's really so favorite anime them. actually which one is it i mean i think for common folks i would say dead note because i think dead note is like it's the insane. most common and it's really insane, oh, it's insane. so if you it's say dead note is my favorite anime maybe it, like everyone will like trust you hey oh this okay. guy and like, then you maybe get like deep. even perks didn't watch anime but he watched, no, he dead, watched note. dead note yeah, yeah exactly here. So I think you, you could say that now, but I think one of my favorite se- series is like Fate State Night series. Um, I think people are familiar with that. And except for this one, like m- from more popular ones, I think how I actually started and how why I do like animes is because of Dragon Ball. Of course. Everyone would watch like I didn't Dragon. even know that was anime until like recently, actually. I, my brain didn't compute that it was yeah, anime. Yeah, it was just Dragon Ball. It was, it was Dragon not Ball, anime, right? it was exactly. Dragon Ball. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Dragon so Ball. I remember like going back from kindergarten when I was back like really young and I would watch it um, and uh, Dragon Ball in like French with I think 
uh, Polish dubbing, you know, so you could see the, here, here the French and then the Polish, and it was like that's so weird. Yeah, it was really weird. very weird. Yeah, like Dragon Ball in French. Oh my god, man, you don't want to witness it. I mean, it was, <laughs> it was, it was my childhood, you know, it was really my childhood, so it was really fun, you know, and uh, yeah, that's I'm how surprised it starts, anybody of. would pick up the French version and translate it to Polish. It's like the it doesn't make any sense yeah it doesn't i don't know why but it was like that you know and uh, yeah my father would watch it as well so i guess i picked up from him you know okay. and he would never watch any anime except for dragon ball so that was pretty good yeah. okay so and now favorite uh, non-anime show non-anime show as of like series or movie or uh, just... show a show so series i think i do enjoy vikings a lot but i think like my favorite of all time could be just basically game of thrones I mean, it's really long and it's just good. I just enjoy it. It's very good, yeah. yeah. It's just entertaining, you know? Like when you watch, you don't feel bored. Did, did you watch Spartacus? Yes, I did. And All it's seasons. not your favorite? No. I mean, it's, it's really good. But this, just... this podcast is not going live. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's my favorite. <laughs> no, Spartacus <laughs> is a really good show as well. I think Spartacus, yeah, I mean, it, it was enjoyable. Honestly, um, it's because... So I always like movies or shows because I always relate to the character, the the the, the main character, right? And I'm and like I feel fucking alpha when I watch Spartacus, like you know. Same goes for I watch Braveheart or like The Last Samurai or like Gladiator. Like I'm always the main character know, like, in my yeah. mind, you know. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, I would fuck that guy up, and I, I don't know. I always relate to that. It's empathy to the main character only. So I must, like my favorite movies of all time are those that are super epic on that one character, you know, mm. like Interstellar as well, like just In epic on one character. actually such a good movie. I so enjoy it so much. It's, it's like this scene when the guy was like crying, you remember it? Oh like, my God. Like when they went to the planet and like, yeah, I don't want to spoil too much, but yeah, yeah. it was so good. For me, I think the best moment of any movie ever, it has to be in the planet with water. You remember that? Yeah, that one. You're talking about Interstellar, right? Yes, but yeah, the, the, they were they were not crying. It was like it was the moment where they get into the planet with water. Spoiler alert! Mute for the next twenty seconds. Yeah, I agree. I like that. Eh? Spoiler alert! Mute for the next twenty seconds. I'm gonna give you five more seconds. Four, three, two, one. There it goes. When the wave comes. But they don't know it's a wave. They think it's a mountain. So the wave gets bigger and bigger. Yeah. And the mountain gets bigger and bigger. That's not a mountain. That's a wave. He's like, holy shit. With the, and with that, the music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Jesus. Like the music was so good. Man, as well. yeah. that's fuck. Like I you have, could feel like like you and your chair would like clinch, you know? Yeah, so they yeah. could run, you know? Like, yeah, it was really insane. Oh but my then God, for me, yeah. the best scene was when they actually went back. Okay, you can you can... Oh, no, no, actually, you no, 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 Oh my god, it's, I just had goosebumps all over the place. Unbelievable. What a great what a great movie, man. Oh, I have to watch that movie again. Thanks. I have to watch that movie again, man. Alright, so I have a there's a lot of questions from the from the people actually. Um, oh, let's go there. Like Twitter that. questions or and uh, favorite game of course World of Warcraft. I don't even have to ask that. Uh, for me? Yeah. No, it's actually league. I mean not le non league okay. related is war wow, yeah. Yeah, well whatever. Like league, yeah, favorite because you enjoy it, whatever. But did you play Warcraft 3 or only WoW? I, I played Warcraft 3 as well. I like so I would the custom games of Warcraft 3 are well, insane. They're the best, yeah. <laughs> like Footman Frenzy, like this other oh, there's this story how is it called? I can't remember. But it was like T D, like Tower Defense. No, Tower Defense, of course I love them as well. Um there was one of Dragon Ball, which I really loved. Um, another one of Pokemon. Yeah, yeah there's like the custom games. I would really wish like StarCraft 2 would have like the same. I know. Of... Because StarCraft 2 has so much potential if they will have like the same game modes as WarCraft 3. I was speaking with, um, with who was it? They, who, who was it? Who, who did I speak with about, about WarCraft 3 mods? The Joe? Anders. Anders, it was Anders. Yeah, thanks. 
we spoke with Anders, a super, is a legendary Counter Strike shoutcaster, and we were thinking it was talking about this, like the ultimate game. It has to be a game that's open source, and people they let people create their maps, and actually you have to pay like a buck or two bucks for the best maps, and they get a cut so that you incentivize people to create the best maps ever without bugs or anything. Imagine if Warcraft 3 custom maps wouldn't have been so buggy because people would actually get money from mm. creating them. Imagine. That would be insane. Yeah. So I think that there will be a moment in which it has to be a Blizzard game, man. Unless somebody else I mean, I it. hope it's Warcraft right. 4, but... Right? It's not oh coming, God, you know, probably because of the... What a World great Warcraft. game! Yeah. What that was my childhood. Game. I played it for like 10 years. Like, even though the game was really old, I still enjoyed it so much. You know? Yeah, honestly, I, could, I wouldn't mind like playing it right now. Like, there's yeah. so, uh, even the shitty graphics, like, it was insane. Yeah, yeah. Like, even story games. Like, you could play story games as an RPG or something. It was yeah, yeah, insane. Yeah. It's yeah. like, it was like a thousand games in a game, you know? Yeah. But also, like, back then, I was like so much younger. And right now, I cannot play single player games anymore because. I feel like I'm wasting time, even though I'm experiencing really? the story, I feel like I'm wasting time. And when I play, basically, when I play anything that's not League, I feel like I'm wasting time. Right, so yeah, makes sense. either I play the game, either I do something else, you know? Yep. And uh, like, I do play WoW sometimes. And when I'm playing WoW, I usually play only because of my friends playing as well. So I don't feel as a wasted time because I enjoy like playing with Socializing them. Socializing and so Socializing, on. Socializing, yeah. But if I would play like a single player game or if I would play like a game that is based on campaign and I just like kind of just grind my way through and like enjoy it, even though like you shouldn't say that you waste time as long as you enjoy wasting your time. Kind exactly. Of. That's just entertainment. It's yeah, it's just entertainment, but it's, I, I just feel bad doing it's, it. Yeah, I, I hear yeah. you. It's 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 normal. I I guess it's normal. <laughs> yeah, it just um, happens to everyone. So yeah, for me, best game of all time, World of Warcraft, hands down. That's it. Warcraft 3 is like must be second with league of legends but world of warcraft is like there'd never be a game like that in my eyes yeah it's unbelievable jesus I last game the last time i played is 2009 and i've and never yeah, played so again awesome. because i wish not to fail in my career <laughs> 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 i'm pretty sure my career will fail if i play world of warcraft because i have a very addicting um uh, personality like a really addicting one and thankfully, I'm addicted to my job now. And yeah, I, it's, it's been like true. that for two, three years. Like really addicted to my job. And I know that if I had an, uh, an addiction like World of Warcraft, it'll take, like, I have to be the best warrior in the world for some fucking reason. You know, it's this addiction. Uh, so I, I better stay away from it, not touch it. I really not touch it. Fuck that. So social media questions. Salsa980. What's your favorite champion to pick right now? That's actually... Okay, let's just say your most fun champion to pick because I don't want you to tell me your favorite champion right now because it may be bad for pick and bam face. In, in <laughs> no, phase I think it's not that extreme. Gauntlet. I think okay. the most enjoyable champ for me always all time was Lee Sin, but since he's just not in like the strongest condition right now, mm -hmm. I think Camille is pretty fun as well. Um, oh, Camille. Like when Camille came out, you couldn't really like jungle with her, but right now it's like kind of possible and they pick her a lot in China and the champ is really mobile, high damage, carry, like just good, nice to play. So Camille, okay. Camille, and if not, listen. Okay. So what's your favorite memory with perks from the past year? From the past year, favorite memory perks, I think... This is from Aingiman. I, I think it was when we qualified to the finals in Spring Split because that was my first finals and I felt like everyone was just playing so good and it was yeah. my like... After so many years, you know, finally I made it to the finals. So it was like really relieving for me and felt good because I bet that one of them, my whole teammates. So yeah, it was just good. <laughs> um, Nightcore Nacio 6 say, asks, what teammate, current or past, memed the most or was the funniest? Oh, this is a hard one. Oh my God. This is a hard <laughs> question, actually. I like this question. I think wonder because we would just laugh 24 7 because okay. we were both polish so in every team we were in after rocket we would always like talk to each other the most and even in h2k we would share the same room for the first year so we would just like just laugh and like troll everyone like when like people hated us you know i mean they hated loved us it was like hate love story where we would just make everyone like really pissed off at, at us but like they would like laugh so much because of us as well you know it was okay. so fun um 
So do you think Ipotar uh, Ipotar Ziki is a is Polish guy for sure because of how it's written? Uh, show me. I need to. Oh, okay, don't show me. No, okay, show me. It's Ipotar Ziki. This guy. I can. Uh... He, it has to be Polish because they want I Potaszycki, yeah, maybe. I Potaszycki. Eugeniusz. Okay, maybe, yeah. Maybe Potaszycki, yeah. Potaszycki. Uh, does regular streaming affect your performance on stage? If so, why? So, let me rephrase this. I'm sorry, I Potaszycki. I'm going to be making the question myself. Uh, so, you actually... I've, I've heard backlash from people about you streaming and... When things go bad, then they will blame streaming for why you don't play well or whatever. And I always tell them the same thing, that this is so bad to say that because um, part of your job is undeniably to please your fans and to entertain them. So, of course, there's always a sweet balance, uh, but it should always be encouraged that you spend time streaming with your fans and so on and so forth. So from our side, that's clear. But from your side, do you think that streaming negatively affects your performance in any way or positively i think that streaming i mean since it was so when you are st when you start streaming and you are not familiar with it mm -hmm. i think it's difficult to focus on the game meanwhile streaming because you want to entertain your audience instead of focusing on the game right. for me though my streams are really educational so when i play the game i talk only about the game and I don't look at the chat much. I Even when I die, I do. But I basically explain my every movement on the map and why it happens. Mm -hmm. So in my head, I'm just like repeating the same pattern as if I would play solo queue normally. But I just talk about it loud instead of in my head, right? I see. So that's why I do believe that streaming doesn't impact my performance. But you have to also realize that when you are streaming, you don't usually play duo queue as often, like try hard duo queue, because you don't want to like show tactics right. or you don't meanwhile streaming you don't really like um, i mean yeah but basically the docu part is like the only part and then when you are streaming you don't watch replays but when you are playing solo queue you don't watch replays either so i think streaming too much is bad i think like streaming 24 percent is bad i think streaming though is not bad at all like i think it's not only part of your job but also i believe that for for me it doesn't like impact me in any way does it make I'm you happy solo queue. and it does make me really and yeah it, it does make me enjoy my time in solo queue more well there so i think streaming is good there goes it. i just think that you have to get used to it and you have to know how to do it because if you stream and you focus on the chat and after after, after every bad play you they flame you polish audience at least or after every good play like you get pumped up i mean I know people are watching you and people are watching you on stage. So it could, you could even argue that it's like similar pressure on you, yeah. you know, like the audience yeah. is there. So you want, you don't want to fuck up. You don't want to screw up. So you put some kind of pressure on you. So you want to play better the best you can. So yeah, no, I, I don't think streaming is bad. Um, I do think though that too much of it is like not that good because if I play only solo queue, I mean, it's, it's the same as with playing solo queue. You need to find time to watch replays, to talk to right. the team and stuff. Yeah, makes sense. All right, fair enough. I, I, I agree with that actually. It made me so happy also when I was streaming and playing. Like the streaming time was like the time I probably enjoyed the most. And then it made me play better in the screams and play, you know, just be more focused on the screams or just happier. I mean, mm. it really that did help. Yeah. I mean, what, what we have to also remember that, for example, when I qualified to semifinals or when I, when we qualified to spring finals, I was still streaming, you know? Right. So like you cannot argue Yeah, but that. people will do that, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you, you lose like, and then they will find something. Yeah, oh. exactly. It's always like this, you know, like when, when you lose, like yeah. suddenly something becomes a problem that was not a problem before yeah, you know and who, it could be true it could be not you know yeah but you know who elon musk is elon musk you know elon musk so elon musk he um leads spacex and tesla oh, okay right? i know i know yeah okay. I, I was yeah you said it weird i mean i would say yeah, it sorry. in a polish way so <laughs> that's why I'm elon like, musk <laughs> yeah yeah so like uh, yeah, yeah okay <laughs> keep going though um so and this guy just recently, it was in the Joe Rogan podcast. It's a really known podcast, and he smoked weed. Like you can clearly see that he doesn't smoke weed typically, but he did smoke weed there. And and then Tesla stock went down, but it wasn't because of that. It was because of other reasons, right? But everybody is pointing out at the fact that he smoked weed to explain why the stock went down a stock going down means that the company is for some reason doing worse in terms of public perception right and people is always just finding something or looking to find something to justify why things are going bad 
That's what that was my point. And that's why people is, is you know, was probably going or was probably doing when you guys lost against Misfits. Anything you would have done would have been used against you. If you would have jumped from a plane, they would have said that why why are you jumping from planes instead of practicing? Yeah, it's and, true, true. <laughs> you know. So it's it's always the same story. Always, always, always. But anyway, Snipes93 asks, what what was the secret? I can't say the secret. That's a good point. Okay, will you say the secret if you qualify in the if you win the gauntlet? And the secret is like last. No, 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 no. You have to keep it cryptic. Keep it interesting. The secret is everything. So no, I can't. There you go. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> so if you win the gauntlet, will we tell the secret? Maybe. M- maybe that's a good one. Maybe. No. No, because no. Like, I mean. If we would have won that game when I told you when I said that I would tell the secret, we didn't win but that game, so it, just, game, yeah. it goes down with me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it goes down with me. I like that. <laughs> oh man, it goes down with you. So it, that means that that secret is gonna follow you until the grave. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe, and maybe, maybe I was, maybe I will tell it to like my my wife, you know, and then maybe it will be like a big. <laughs> drama because she was my wife for 15 years just to know the secret and then she just like <laughs> publish it or something <laughs> but, yeah. okay um how well wait overtime section this is new i like this okay overtime section how well jankos know carlos okay carlos is a big fan of movies and tv shows which famous famous i love this actually which famous actor did carlos name his runes masteries Page after? How the fuck do I know that? Bro, everybody, everybody knows that! I don't know that! Even the Polish Mafia knows that! You're just not part of the Polish Mafia. That's what I'm you just yeah, tell see, I'm it the was, good guy. It's Will Smith. Okay, makes sense. League of Legends is almost nine years old. How old is Carlos? Why do you, like... You're a cunt. Hey, by the way, like, I will feel really bad after those questions. <laughs> okay. I mean... I, I think okay, I'm like, it's okay. you know what, Carlos? It looks like 25 the most. Okay, 25 the most. Okay. Now, no, for real. How old do you think I am? I have a kid. Yeah, I know, I know. I know that much <laughs> and I know I have a wife as well. <laughs> so, I think they're like 28. Okay, that's that's nice. That's correct. Correct? Yeah, that's correct. <sighs> Jesus. Our performance last weekend wasn't the best. Which champion did Carlos have the lowest win rate over five games on his competitive career? Are you fucking serious? Uh <laughs> Is this all factual? Yes. I Gragas or Ari? Okay. Why are you why are you okay? I, I hear you. Okay. So uh, is I'm it li- true or no? I'm listening. Yeah, it's one of both. For some fucking reason you know it. <laughs> this is so stupid. I hate you now. I, I loved it at the beginning. Now I hate it. <laughs> so yeah. Gragas or Ari? Oh, so I have He's to one answer. of both. Yes. Yeah. I think Gragas. Okay, it's Ari. It's Ari. Okay. He's a 28% win rate. How is that even fucking possible? I was a decent Ari. Yeah, okay, that's why I chose Gragas. But I think you played Ari and like you... Okay, you would win more on like Oriana. I right. Think. Not right. on Ari, maybe. Not okay, on. you're not making it better. Chogas <laughs> Fist can now stack defin- indefinitely. What does Carlos' Sunday cheat meal consists of? Dude! <laughs> Sunday meal, <laughs> cheat meal, <laughs> cheat meal. Um, probably like, probably like something unhealthy, right? So because it cheat meal, so maybe like burgers. Yeah, that's exactly right. McDonald's cheeseburgers. Like I literally eat. Yeah, I, eat. I mean that. That's my cheat meal. I mean my really? cheat meal. Is nice. a, no, my cheat meal is like waffles because I oh. usually eat unhealthy food too, but I don't eat sugar at all. Almost, you know, okay. I don't drink like uh, sugary drinks. I don't. Drink, I don't. Okay yeah so i don't eat sweets so when i do it's just i just eat sugar i just okay. eat cake i just eat waffles so my, my cheat meal is actually um one big mac menu uh two large fries two cheeseburgers two double cheeseburgers one apple pie and nine chili cheese nuggets do you like, and eat it all at once yes or? i eat everything during the day and i also eat 15 pancakes it's not pancakes it's actually well not crepes? Waffles, crepes yeah 15 crepes with 
uh, how is it called? This Canadian syrup? Maple syrup. Maple syrup, yeah. You see, I love food as well. <laughs> I know all of it, you know. I, I know, I know that's the every, deal. That's every Sunday, by the way. Every Sunday. Never fails. Yeah. Every Sunday. The last shot for Worlds this year is the gauntlet. Which season did Carlos make it to Worlds? <laughs> the answer! <laughs> Can't. Uh, it's okay. Nobody will ever know. Season three on the analyst desk. <laughs> <laughs> you see, this bad. It's bad. It's bad. Bad people. We have bad people here. They don't respect me. Rice carries a book on to cast spells. I like how the sentence, the, the question starts like, like giving normal, context, yeah. and then it goes into becoming a motherfucker question. Rice. Rice carries a book to cast spells. What is the name of Carlos's book that he wrote? Nah, whatever, you won't know. <laughs> Nobody will, uh, that is not a Spanish will ever know. This is in Spanish. Saint Cook's picked You wrote a book? I mean, you I wrote, <laughs> you, uh, I wrote you a book, yeah. Wrote a book, in yeah. Spanish. <laughs> we, we sold a shit on those. It, only in Spanish. Mm. Pretty good book. <laughs> That's not something that the book writer should say, but I did. Um, Saint Cooks picked Lulu mid twice in their playoff match against Vitality. How many games did Carlos win on Lulu mid in his career? <laughs> Probably like <laughs> I hated Lulu. Probably like zero. Yes, like, yeah. zero out of four actually. <laughs> zero out of four games I won on Lulu. So, so I have a zero percent, a zero percent win ratio <laughs> on Lulu. That's unbelievable. I hated Lulu by the way. I was just so fucking angry. I was really angry. Okay, and the fi the final one, our Polish league, uh, our Polish colleague Lothar had a child over the weekend. Do you know that? Yeah, I knew. I saw on Instagram, I believe. Pretty cool. L actually, Lothar is such a cool guy. He's actually a cool guy. I I'm not gonna ask this question. Let's just, just talk about Lothar. That's amazing. Actually, do you know he be he became a full time streamer? <laughs> a full time streamer? Like now? Yeah, he became a full time streamer for Fortnite, and he's oh, fucking really? good. He's oh, I mean, really... I, I know that he's a good player because he I think he played PUBG before. So I knew like before that he was good and I knew also before his like G2 career, like he was also a full-time streamer kind of, you know, I mean, he would, yeah. he would play tournaments, but he would be full-time streamer, but then the accident happened and then yeah. he stopped and then now he's Yeah, you remember like, that, right? Oh my God. Yeah, and then now he's Terrible. trying to climb up back again. So yeah, it's really like respectful, you know, that he, even though like some things did not go his way, he's still like trying his best to like actually have a good future and... Yeah. Uh, uh, it's really respectable, yeah. And I didn't talk to him much because I actually got to know him when I joined G2 and he would talk to me. Man, you should. And, he knows uh, everything about yeah, streaming. Yeah, he's like it's so insane. smart, yeah. I mean, I did ask him like tips and like I, I did talk to him about like streaming and other stuff and he, like it seems like he just knows everything, you know? He because knows he, everything. Like, he reads so much about it. So. He's so creative as well. Like he will have, I mean, the Joe watches his stream a lot uh, as a as he's part of his job and and it's unbelievable the kind of shit he does. Like he like high fives himself with a green screen. Like he has a button. He was this stream deck thing. He hits the button and then he has like a record pre-recorded thing. There's like himself in a green screen doing a high five. And then he does the high five when he makes a good play with himself. That is actually so insane. It's insane. Like it's kind of shit like that that makes him so special actually. So you should speak with him. He will tell you so many things. Mm -hmm. He's one of the best. Like entertainment wise he's not english native so it's hard for him to speak english in an entertaining way but he's getting better at it but gameplay wise he became so fucking good at, at, at fortnite i i don't understand like he became so good the way he builds the everything the his aim and everything he became so good so fast and now he has this you know fun style like the high five stuff and other stuff going yeah, on it's actually from so my nice. experience it's so difficult to like be entertaining at streaming in your non-native language because for me yep. it was always well you are one of the few like you're one of the few that is super entertaining because you don't care about the way you speak you just speak yeah, yeah it's true but also it's you know when i stream in polish i make so many jokes and everything is so natural but when i'm talking in english it's like i'm like maybe i'm not worried about my pronunciation because it's not the best but i know i can work on it it's just more like when I say stuff, it just doesn't like come as naturally. Like yeah. it just don't, doesn't come to my mind like that, you know? So it's, ah, sucks, but it's fine. I, I will hey, it's getting you know? better though. Like yeah, you're getting I'm, much I'm, better. I mean, I started streaming in English and I only had two streams and then the boom happened and then I was not streaming for like one month now, but I actually like streamed yesterday and I probably stream tomorrow. That's nice. And then, you know, after Worlds, I will probably stream more and I will like try to stream like way more in English. So that's nice that I have more opportunity to gain. I, I watched the streams, it was really good actually. 
I, th- I thought it was really, really good. Way better than I thought it would mm. be. Like, really, really good. So you should keep trying. You know, there's a point. It happened in my mind. Now I think in English, actually. I think in English. I have dreams in English. Like, I... I think, I don't know, I, and yeah, I prefer I mean, talking happens. English, even though my accent is still super Spanish. Uh, but at some point you develop your own thing and, and you just make so many jokes in English. I mean, I, I'm doing jokes all the time as well, and I cannot do it as well in Spanish as I can mm-hmm. do it in English. You just at some point just default into that. So keep keep doing that, man. Your stream is actually, is actually sick. You have a sick stream. Thank you, thank you. Um, all right, well, that's pretty much it. I, I, there's so many topics that we could speak about, but we'll have to leave them for another time. Now I know that it's... How much were we talking about? I mean, talking... Like an hour and a half? Like maybe a little bit more than an hour and a half? It's actually so fast, no? Yeah, it's, it, yeah, it goes like out When fast. you talk and you just like talk, it's... Just, You're having fun, it yeah. just goes out so fast. Um, I know that you gotta... Uh, so the timing which we're recording this is before scream time. So now you gotta go back and uh, prepare for screams. I wish you the very best, of course, because it's also my best interest. <laughs> <laughs> People every, everywhere wish you the very best. You are, you guys are the most, or one of the most likable teams in the ULCS. Maybe tied with Fnatic. Everybody loves you. And uh, we just have high expectations on you. Don't go overly hard on yourselves for how fucking bad you went against Misfits. We trust you. You'll do your very best. And uh, yeah, best of luck, bro. Yeah, you want, you want to say something to the fans? Yeah, I mean, I would like to... I mean, I think I did already, but I just like to apologize because... We, I mean, I, because, you know, everyone in our team could have done more when it comes to us not playing. Put the microphone closer. So it's deeper, you know. So I would like to apologize to our fans because, I mean, to my fans and to G2 fans for the performance against Misfits. I think none of us played well um, to, you know, like we cannot blame it on like a single person. And we cannot say that one guy performed like the best out of the team because we all just sucked. And I'm really sorry for that because that was not, not meant to happen. And last time we went to finals and this time we were supposed to go to finals and win against Fnatic, but it didn't happen. But I can promise you that we will go on stage in the gauntlet and we'll play our hearts out. And no matter what happens, we are playing better now and we believe we can win. We are confident and we'll just, we'll just show you how we are, you know, as G2 and it will be better and uh, I believe we can win for sure. So Wrong. just enjoy it, you know, just I love have fun. It. I love it. Beautiful. You're so wholesome when you get into that mood, man. You're so wholesome. You know what wholesome means? Like, wholesome? N- like nice? Like nice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Nice. It's it's so nice. It just feels so nice to listen to that. Um, I watch a lot of dogs. What? On the internet. You watch a lot of what? Dogs. Talks? Dogs. Uh, dogs? Does that make you nicer? Watching dogs on the internet? I like to think so. I mean, <laughs> dogs are just so nice, no? <laughs> when I watch dogs, they are so, like, so kind. W- when I was telling you about saying random things, I was expecting exactly this. So I love to finish the stream with yeah. a completely random comment about how he likes puppies. And that's Not why... puppies. I mean, I like puppies. Everyone likes puppies, but I like dogs. Like, Should, okay, dogs. dogs. Also, Grown all dogs, dogs. Like dogs. Really all dogs? Dogs, all dogs are, like, really nice dogs, you know? Okay. Nicest dogs, like the grandpa dogs. You like, but like, you like I just cats like or dogs, dogs more? Yeah. Dogs by far. Okay. Do, do, like for 100% uh, I'll dogs. say the same. I'll say the same. In Spain, uh, there's a saying that um, uh, a cat is a king in a poor's house. That's what yeah. they say in Spain. Kind of. Which is funny. He just fucks around, goes around. He doesn't yeah, he give just a fuck. He just doesn't, eats everything. Yeah, he just doesn't give a fuck. That's like the, fuck. the best thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Jankos, we love you. Best of luck today in streams and best of luck in the gauntlet. We all cheer for you. And... For everybody else watching, here comes the plugin. Plugin or plug? The, the plug. Here comes the plug. Give me stuff, Joanna. G2esports.com slash shop. Here you can buy all this great stuff. This is, this is the normal G2 Esports jersey. The one that the players used to play uh, on every single tournament except Gauntlet because they may play with the Spanish one. The US one, if you're from the US, or if you're not, if you're just a fanboy of the US, that's okay too. Because like we American are, burgers. The American, what? Burgers. Burgers. Burgers, I, okay, the American burgers. No, I don't like, tell me I said it wrong. I said it no, right. No, no, you said it, you said it right. Burgers. Says me, not understanding properly. This, when is this coming out? When is this one coming soon. out? Soon. This one is coming out soon. It's the inverse version. You like it? Yeah, Yeah. We, it looks uh, cool. I mean, I like black, so... I like I, black more, as well. Yeah. But this one, people seem to love it. Uh, black is not for everybody, so here, white and black. 
you'll be able to buy it so save your money uh, it's probably gonna be 60 bucks as always uh, that is a great one by the way the pink and one. this one is insane this is one of my favorites actually the pink one it's also coming out soonish um so again save money you're gonna you want to buy all of them at the same time <laughs> <laughs> and this one is no longer available but i just show it to you so that you feel bad about not having bought it because and it says also what a great thing so this one we sold a shit ton of units like and it's sold out i think we have nothing left actually s. s do we have s i think it's over as well check it out maybe we have s left um maybe that tells you a lot about the kind of people that follow g2 they are not fat they just hit the gym a lot and if you hit the gym a lot you can just go for an s they have big chest big bicep big tricep big lats big traps it's impossible to go with an s I, even though i'm not from spain like this jersey looks really cool you know i like it i like it a lot actually well, now, now I mean, it's a Spanish. shame yeah it's a shame we couldn't like show it off in madrid but like it looks really cool i like it i mean i think that the pink one like tells pink one is insane pink one is like Same. cool you know it's like holy shit i have a pink t-shirt but the, the spanish one, one is cool pink one is insane people we love you so much and after this plaque <laughs> there comes another plaque i'm just i just want you to buy stuff <laughs> we love you so much it is what comes last shop thank you for watching we had the first blood king here and the best support in the world and also the untiltable king i'm just giving him adjectives left and right you enjoyed yourself here yeah i did actually i mean the time passed very quickly so it was good it yeah. did it was fun we love you